I'm Linda Edwards. And I'm Brian Mennell. We're orchardists, organic orchardists here in the Milkmean Valley, very proudly growing organic ambrosia. I grew up in the Smilkmean Valley and probably by age of 12 I did, thought I wanted to farm and um, I went to university and came back in the early 70s and bought my first farm. I grew up in a farm as well, although it was green and cattle, not, not tree fruits. I loved bugs. <laughs> I really was fascinated by insects. And right from an early childhood, it was just natural for me to pick something up, put it in a jar, go home and watch it. Feed it, see if it could fly. You know, If anybody had paid attention, they would have said, yes, she likes biology. But science was not an option for me, for my generation growing up where I did in rural Saskatchewan. So in my mid-30s, I went back to school got a Bachelor of Science, Master's, and set up a company in, agri in tree fruits and agriculture, and here I am many years later. And it, it's what I really was meant to do. We knew we were a good match when he offered to show me his high-density cherry block, which was quite unique at that time, and I was really excited to see it. <laughs> the whole basis of organics is, is the soil. You start with the soil and work up. We don't use synthetic fertilizers. Uh, we can use some minerals if there's a deficiency, but essentially we, part of your farm plan when you become organic has to be how you're going to build your soil. We don't have a silver bullet, and that's probably why a lot of growers don't get involved in organics, yeah. because they like to have a solution. I mean, most modern day farmers are A-type personalities. They like to have straight rows, they like to have everything neat and tidy, they like to have it in order and you can't have that with organics. You've got messy grass in the rows and some years you have weather conditions that you are going to have take losses. And, but it's much more labor intensive and that's part of where the extra cost comes in. Whereas conventional you've got herbicides that are much cheaper and work for a much longer period of time. One of the biggest threats to ambrosia that we've had in the last few years was something called apple clear wing moth. This came in from Europe and it, it is not a problem there, but in hot climates, Jordan, Spain, here, it just took off. Everybody was saying, oh, I'm gonna plant cherries instead of, it was bad. You would go to an orchard and 100% of the trees would have lots of these larvae, and they were starting to really go downhill and die. I am an entomologist. I got my degree at UBC. So the entomological background came in, um, and organics led the way. We're lucky, organically, we have a couple of things that we can use for their biological, for their biological bacteria that we can apply to the tree, which will uh, hit, affect certain insects, and, and this one worked for this particular larva. We do all this research right in our own orchards, and we see immediately what works and what doesn't. And, uh, and yeah, if we hadn't figured out how to control apple clear wing moth, you would not be looking at these wonderful fruit today. And we know we'll keep on solving these problems so we can keep on growing these wonderful apples. Being part of the team that has brought organic ambrosia to the world has been very exciting. And I think it's, we're humble because it just happens serendipity yeah. to turn up in our, yeah. in, in our brother's orchard. So we can't jump on down, we did it, we did it. We helped it along. But if it hadn't been a great apple, right from the get-go, that we wouldn't be standing here today.